Good morning. Welcome to this uh, morning devotion from Serenity United Church of Christ. I'm glad you found us whenever you found us, however you found us. Uh, my name is J.D. Rose. I'm a senior pastor here at Saren. Uh, and uh, I'm excited, uh, believe it or not, that we have this way to be in contact with one another, that we uh, can, can reach out uh, through Facebook and YouTube and our website and uh, share a good word, share the good news, uh, bring you a good message to start your day or end your day, or during your lunch, or whenever it is you choose to watch this. And if this is several seasons after we are a virtual church, I hope this still blesses you. I want to tell you this story. It's one of my favorite stories uh, as a way to uh, start this day off for you and get you to thinking about the times that we are living through um, in maybe a way that you hadn't before. Uh, I went to serve um, uh, First United Church of Christ in Bluffton, Indiana, uh, when I was 21, and uh, uh, there was a senior pastor there, a great guy by the name of Neil Wilson, uh, who taught me a lot, and an associate pastor there, uh, one of the kindest uh, men I've ever known, uh, named Jim Eshelman. And they hired me on to be the uh, director of youth ministry and Christian education. And so I didn't get to preach very much there. I got to preach about once out of every nine or ten uh, Sundays. Like, maybe they'd give me the fifth Sundays or what they really did is they gave me all the holidays nobody wanted to be around for, like Labor Day and Memorial Day. Um, I preached a lot of Labor Days and Memorial Days in my time. Um, the very first time that I ever preached there, uh, I went up and gave my sermon. I had written out every word. I did that for several years. I, I, I couldn't hardly do that anymore. But I, but I gave what I thought was a good sermon. I'm sure now, looking back on it, I would, I would give myself lots and lots of pointers. Um, but then I went to the door to greet people as they left, which uh, was the custom uh, at that church. It is the custom at this one. Um, and an old guy uh, uh, named Floyd, I won't say his last name because uh, he's still around. An old guy named Floyd, uh, so I guess he probably wasn't as old as I thought, uh, stopped me. And he pulled down on my collar. I didn't have a tie on, which I'm sure was the bane of several of their existences that morning. But he pulled down on my collar and he said, I want to tell you something, young man. Don't you forget us Worthman people. And I said, Worthman people? What's a Worthman person? And he goes, you go ask Pastor Jim. He'll tell you. And so uh, I sat there wondering what that meant and wondering if that was good or bad. Uh, seemed bad by the tone and the tug. Um, but I went and asked Pastor Neil first. Uh, he uh, was in the office about all the time when I was there, and so I went to him first, and I said, Hey, uh, Floyd stopped me at the door uh, after my sermon Sunday, and he said, Hey, don't forget us Worthman people. And uh, he said, You're kidding. I go, No, I don't know what that means. And he just laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. And he said, You need to go ask Pastor Jim that question. And so I waited until Pastor Jim was in. Uh, he uh, was just a part-time guy. He did some pastoral care. It was basically just a loving presence that we all fed off of. And I waited until he came in. He was in his 80s and uh, uh, older than Floyd. And uh, I went in his office as soon as he got there. And I said, hey, uh, Pastor Jim, at the door Sunday, Floyd said to me, uh, he pulled on my shirt, and then he said, don't forget us Worthman people. And Jim cocked his head, and he goes, he did? I go, yeah, but I don't know what that means. And he just started dying laughing also. Just dying laughing. And I said, I, I don't get it, I don't get it. And he said, he's referring to a pastor who used to serve here that a lot of this congregation uh, still uh, sees as kind of their in, still kind of sees as the pastor they most identify with uh, as, as members of this church, First United Church of Christ in Bluffton. I said, okay. So he's a past pastor here. And he goes, yeah. And he's just beaming from ear to ear. And I don't get the joke yet. I'm like, all right, well, Jim, well, when was he the pastor here? I don't remember that name. And he just leans back and laughs and laughs and laughs. He had a contagious laugh. I can still hear it. And he said, Matt Worthman was last the pastor here in 1954. about that for a minute and what that meant for me at 21 in 2001 and I said okay 1954 and he shakes his head and he laughs I go, and I said that's the year my father was born now I have used that story for years to talk about how we do this in the church we dig in our heels and we get uh, married to a past era 
And there are people at this church that do that. In fact, I'm probably one of them. I would tell you that my entry point to Saren uh, was when Paul Bauck was pastor. And that's kind of the Saren that I uh, am still trying to recreate or have us grow back into or become again or whatever. Uh, even though I'm a totally different kind of leader, even though we're in a totally different season, uh, I've thought that way, even as the pastor here, about being the pastor here. Uh, some people identify with the Roths. Some go back further and uh, identify with Reverend Barry or even Reverend Stepler. Um, I could have missed some folks in between, but, but the point is, <laughs> I have used this story for the last 20 years to basically say to people like, look, this is a bad thing. We get uh, dug into these ways of thinking and they're not good for us. They uh, have us uh, not thinking about ways to evolve and ways to reach new people and ways to be innovative and ways to be welcoming and ways to keep things fresh. I have used that story for years because uh, up until very recently, I always felt like the youngest guy in ministry. And I was always serving in a capacity where I was supposed to bring some of that new energy and bring some of that innovation and point to where the church was going, not where it had been. Well, this season that we're in, where we have to become a virtual church, has thrust us into a new way of doing church, has forced us to use technology, has forced us to get creative about how we reach people and how we share the good news, has forced us to take a quantum leap forward and what it means to be church and how that gets done. And I can't help but thinking about how Floyd's doing I know he's still around and he still goes to, to, to First Church up in Bluffton. I, I can't help but thinking how he's doing. Is he watching church on his cell phone or his uh, computer or on his TV screen? Has someone hooked him up with that technology? Because they're live streaming their worship also. <laughs> and as he's logging in every day, is he thinking about Matt Worthman, who was the pastor in 1954? Is he mumbling under his breath as he logs into a live stream on Facebook? Wow, this is pretty different for us Worthman people. And as I get delighted by the notion of that, and as I think about what my ministry has looked like uh, since then, since uh, almost 18 years have passed, since I had that conversation uh, with this man, oh, almost 19 now, I think about all the ways ministry has changed and all the way, ways my ministry has changed. And your experience of church is different. I know that because I'm speaking to you from your Facebook page or a YouTube or you're on our church website. And I wonder this. 40 or 50 years from now, is there going to be a new pastor or a, a new associate pastor or a youth a director that they let preach all the Sundays no one's around <laughs> at Saren. Is there going to be one walk up here and uh, little old Jacob Bredaway uh, walks up to him and says, Hey, don't forget us Rose people. That just warms my heart. <laughs> Is A.J. Dale going to walk up to a, a pastor at some time who's preached this innovative sermon that's pushing his limits a little bit and he goes, Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, don't, don't forget us people who, who are, are folk people. Don't forget us uh, folks who live through the, the COVID-19 pandemic and are used to getting our church uh, live stream to us. Is, are we living in, in the new reality where people are going to start uh, wanting different things from their church and want us to deliver messages in different ways? Uh, I've been to three or four churches where the pastor wasn't live. He was on a, a video screen speaking to us like the Wizard of Oz. They were a multi-site campus having church all across the big city at once, and the pastor was only in one of those places. And I sat there thinking, this is a little out of my comfort zone. I'm a Bauk kind of Christian. I want you to think about how we've been forced into these changes, and then I want you to understand it's a good thing. Oh my, is it a good thing. You know how I know? Because I spent uh, one of the last Sundays watching 10 or 12 different worship services from people all across the country, ministry colleagues and good friends and relatives as they engaged in ministry and put it out to the masses through uh, online media. You know how I know it's a good thing? Because what God's always trying to do is make sure that the good news gets spread far and wide in as many ways as possible. And of course, it's time God took over technology for good instead of the evil that many of us tend to employ it for. 
I know it's a good thing because Hebrews 13.8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And as long as we're finding a way to share that good news of who Jesus is, to tell stories about God's love in the Easter season and beyond, as long as we're using our online medium, our YouTube, our Facebook, whatever comes later, to share the good news of Jesus Christ, then we can always point any of those people uh, now and forever who might identify themselves with a, a particular preacher or a particular style or a particular season or even a particular church, we can always point them to the thing that's bigger and the thing that's permanent. Their Savior, Jesus Christ. See, that's the thing that I came to realize as I served First Church in Bluffton and, and as Floyd would often get up and leave when I was going to preach, if he saw my name in the bulletin, he'd bail. Uh, so we stopped putting my name in the bulletins. As I tried in, uh, in absolute uh, uh, unsuccessfully to bridge the divide between 1954 and 2001 with that one guy, I realized the problem here is that instead of him and I focusing on our common Savior and our shared, uh, uh, our shared Savior, we're focusing on the differences we have amongst generations. Well, understand this. Right now, there's a young family with little kids watching this morning devotion. And right now, there's, there's all the people who are being forced to stay at their house and are, are loving that we have things coming to them every day watching this morning devotion. And there's uh, middle-aged people and there's teenaged people and there's all sorts of age groups and styles and understandings. There's people who identify with all sorts of different moments in the history of Saren Church and they're all together right now watching this morning devotion because God decided it's time for the church to follow me in a new way. To receive the good news through a new medium. To stretch itself out a little bit into what may seem uncomfortable but can be used to my glory. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whether that's a three-point sermon in 1954 with a robed uh, pastor suited underneath whether that's 1994 and a guy's up here playing guitar and singing and preaching. Whether that's 2020 and we're having to do this with a camera at the top of the stairs at church on a Tuesday night to be shared later on for a morning devotion. The constant. Now and forever. Since the beginning of the church is Jesus is Jesus. And so as we move through further uh, unprecedented days when our rhythm is thrown off and we don't get to worship face to face in whatever style you prefer, I hope you understand that the thing that still connects us to the church we have always been and the church we will always be is the good news of Jesus Christ. And the thing that connects us to all the other churches who are also being forced uh, to, to watch their church virtually, even the one Floyd goes to now in his late 80s, is the good news of Jesus Christ. And the thing that I'll be listening for in my old age and the children of our church in theirs and the children to come in theirs is the good news of Jesus Christ being shared in this place and in all places. And that just has my day started with a big smile. And I hope yours too. Jesus Christ is the ever constant, never changing thing that connects all of these devotions and all of our communication and all of our online content to every sermon ever preached beyond the wooden doors to my left. Now and forever. Amen.